Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Six Pack NFL Mock Draft 1.0 or February edition. I'm going to be breaking down all 32 first round picks of my latest mock for you today. I'm mostly going to be talking about the prospects and why I think they fit these respective teams. Um, we're not going to be spending too much time on each pick because we don't want this to be too long, but hopefully we can get a good little breakdown of why I made each pick. I'll be aiming to do two or three mocks like these throughout draft season with hopefully a two or three round mock coming in April. Uh, mocks are a fun exercise to evaluate where team needs stand as we roll through free agency and sort of evaluate where the dominoes might fall in April, so it's a fun little exercise to do. Uh, obviously, we got a lot of work to get to, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but it's a necessary step in the process. Um, in no mean is this a big board. Just because a player is in this mock's first round doesn't mean that I have a first round grade on him, and vice versa if a player is left out. Uh, the order of how these guys fall positionally doesn't reflect anything either. It doesn't mean I like a cornerback. For example, I'm going to have C.J. Henderson falling before um, Jeff Gladney, for example, or Christian Fulton not even in this first round. But it doesn't mean I don't have a first round grade, at least temporarily right now, on Christian Fulton. It, it doesn't reflect where I rank these players. It's just a question of team fits right now. Uh, we're not going to break down any trades either. This is just to set the table the first mock of the season we're just going to be going through the order and 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 projecting what might happen if everything was to stay the same which obviously isn't the case in the nfl draft so let's get to it because we have 32 picks to get through here uh we'll get started with the first pick the cincinnati Bengals select joe burrow not a huge surprise here it'd be very hard for the Bengals to explain passing on burrow uh, harder than to explain that rather than explain why they picked Burrow when you look at his stellar senior season. I mean, hometown kid as well, Heisman winner, national champ. Um, took a huge step up from his junior season to his senior. You know, he's a great athlete in the pocket. He moves around. He stays calm and confident. Keeps his eyes downfield under pressure. He throws with touch and accuracy. He really varies his throws very well. He's got a nice little arsenal there. Uh, he's got a great deep ball. He gives his receivers space to make plays with the ball in their hands. And, and after the catch, um, he's, he's the perfect point guard at the position. And it's ironic because he's played point guard before. Uh, the, the one big knock on him you could have is maybe his arm strength. Uh, it's not top of the class, but it's plenty sufficient, I think, for the next level. Um, especially for what the Bengals do on offense. Um, I mean, they're going to break down with him why why he took such a big step up from his junior season to senior season but when at the end of the day I think it'd be a huge mistake to pass on him considering what he's done and if he doesn't live up to expectancies at the at the next expectations at the le next level you can't knock yourself too bad when you look at what this guy put on tape on his final season I mean it, you can't pass on him it's that simple all right with the next pick we got the Washington Redskins uh, going for Chase Young against n again not a huge surprise there. Um, now there is a strong possibility that the Redskins trade down. They gave up their second round pick in last year's trade for edge rusher Montez Sweat. But in my opinion, drafting an edge rusher last year won't affect what they do this year, especially when you have a generational talent like Chase Young and the fact that the front office that drafted Montez Sweat is gone. Uh, you brought in a new head coach, Ron Rivera. He's defensive minded makes sense really when you want to revitalize a defense as meant to be this team's strength on paper at least um very disappointing last year so get, go and get that ge generational edge rusher and young um a tone setter for rivera uh, kerrigan and anderson won't be around forever um now when you look at the roster with young in there uh that interior d line's already very potent i mean deron Payne, jonathan allen matt ionitis um add sweat and young in there and is potentially one of the top defensive lines in the league so just gotta gotta work up and shore up that offense and maybe the secondary a little bit and this team can compete all right with the third pick the Detroit Lions select Jeffrey Okuda a cornerback out of Ohio State this is one of my favorite prospects in the draft super fluid athlete uh, obviously this is potentially a trade down scenario where they could potentially still get Okuda if the Giants were to pass on him if that's the way things shape out Obviously, no trades in this mock. Uh, so, Okuda is the best option. It ensures that they can move on from Slay when they do, whether it is this season in trade or next season in free agency, who knows. 
Um, they drafted Oruwariye last year in the fifth round. I really liked him out of Penn State, and he flashed in the second half of the year when they gave him some time on the field. So the future at corner sh is bright if they do go Okuda and pair him up with Oruwariye on the other side in the future. Um, you don't see a lot of corners go in the top three, but it is a premium position. I mean, the last corner to go top five with Denzel Ward uh, out of Ohio State as well, and he, um, he lived up. He's living up right now to to that draft pick. So uh, Nokuda is just next in line in, in that in that in that in that legacy right there. Uh, he's got tremendous skill set to be a lockdown men coverage corner on the boundary, elite footwork super fluid athlete great length and he uses it well both against the run and the pass when you look at him stack and shed receivers on the on the on the boundary against the run great 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 run fits i mean he really really sets a hard edge and doesn't let anything get outside of him so i really like that he crowds the line of scrimmage he's a nightmare in press the way he varies techniques he can jab you doesn't do it a lot but he can do it and and he's super patient when he doesn't use physicality he's gonna mirror you well he's got a narrow base there's a lot to like about the way he, pay, he plays press um it's one weakness maybe that might be that consistency and in, in being physical in press and will he able to do it will he be able to do it against the bigger bigger competition at the nfl level but i'm sure he will he's got potential to be a top five corner in the league moving on the fourth pick in the draft we got the new york giants who have got a plethora of needs to, to deal with but I think priority number one, number one, should be protecting Daniel Jones. When 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 you spent a sixth sixth pick in the draft last year to pick him up, uh, Soldier hasn't been good. Remmers is moving on and won't be missed. Um, the interior offensive line is fine. I like Will Hernandez and and Kevin Zeitler, who was a great great acquisition in the OBJ trade. Gettleman loves going going trenches early, so there's a strong possibility that he does turn to Wills, maybe Beckton, maybe we've seen Beckton mock there, we've seen Wirfs, I mean, maybe Thomas. There's the, the top end of this tackle class is really, really attractive, and they could all fall, fall off the board before the 15th pick, so it's going to be fun to watch. And if teams want to tackle, I mean, we could see teams trading up for a tackle as well. Waiting for one might not be the solution, although it, it is pretty deep. There's development, developmental uh, talent later on but y if you want top end year one impact you're gonna have to trade up because these guys are gonna fall off the board real quick um so yeah the giants bring in wills he can step right in at right tackle he's, he's a mean athlete dude's got a nasty demeanor on the field he's a polished pra pass protector tremendous feet super nimble um he can mirror he can mirror against stunts he's he, he can mirror against counters he's 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 about as complete of a pass protector you can get, and he's aggressive in the run game. I mean, he's a bit undersized, so maybe his year one impact won't, won't be his ceiling, but he's got he's got huge potential at the next level, and what he can do, already do in pass protection is is pretty rare. So really, big fan of Wills. Not my OT1 right now on the big board, but could very well grade out there when, when it's all said and done. All right, with the fifth pick, we got the Miami Dolphins, and no major surprise there either. They go to uh, Tagovailoa. Um, realistically, they'll need to trade up if they want to. Uh, I think it's a perfect fit. I mean, you, you still have Ryan Fitzpatrick, so you can let Tua sit there and, and sit behind him and get healthy and get ready to play in the in the big leagues. And, and I mean, you, you don't get prospects like Tua often. Um, there's going to be people that are going to try to poke holes in his game, and it's very tough. Um, I've honestly not agreed with a lot of the takes I've seen out there. He's an advanced mental processor. He's perhaps the best cerebral QB in the draft, in my opinion. The way he manipulates safeties with his eyes is very, very rare. Uh, he's got athleticism. His footwork in the pocket is off the charts. Uh, he can extend plays. And I don't just mean rolling out a structure. I mean just moving around in the pocket, knowing he needs that extra time, seeing that blindside rusher moving up and making the throw with good timing to give his receiver the the opportunity to make a play after the catch so what Tua does is impressive and the whole Burrow versus Tua debate is a bit out of hand and, and who you prefer you, you I mean they're both outstanding at they're both outstanding quarterbacks and there's a huge gap after them when you look for the next year of quarterbacks I mean they might not even get first round grades in my opinion these guys are way ahead of the pack um, the only tiebreaker right now is Tua's durability concerns and if we can get any insight that might make the decision a lot harder when when it's a, when when we get to April but big big time quarterback and I think if it wasn't for those injury concerns he he'd be 
he's still be in the talk for for first prospect up the board and and deservedly so all right the los angeles chargers with the six picks select justin herbert quarterback out of oregon so they are moving on from rivers um so i don't see much of a logic in going to free agency for a veteran if you're moving on from rivers i mean it wouldn't make a lot of sense there's there's not a lot of QBs in free agency that I think are better than Philip Rivers. Um, they'll definitely be in the race for Tua. It's going to be all about who can make the best offer to the Lions or the Redskins potentially, uh, and who can who can get that that front runner that that front that pole position to to draft Tua Tagovailoa. But right now they get Justin Herbert. Uh, arm strength, arm talent is off the charts. Size, mobility. He really checks out as a prototypical NFL quarterback, and teams are going to really want to get that in the building. He can get it all over the yard. Um, he's ideal, really, when you look at the weapons they have on the outside and with uh, Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. You want someone that can really chuck it to them and, and let them get let them get deep, especially Keenan, uh, Mike Williams. They do run a lot of play-action passing in, in Los Angeles, so I think that is a good fit. He's going to need those wide-open targets. He's not a consistently accurate quarterback, but there are tools to work with. When he gets his first read, he's on the money usually. He can get through progressions. The issue is trust kind of dips when 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 the first read isn't there. Everything kind of slows down. He holds his arm back. You, you want to see him attack a bit more. I mean, you want to see him play attacking football from the quarterback position, and we haven't seen that in college from him. And I think that's the biggest knock everyone holds against him. Uh, a lot of screen plays. They haven't really put a lot on his plates. Uh, is it a trust issue? Is it? Uh, it's tough to understand. Uh, when he grades out, he might not get a first-round grade, but the tools are off the chart with him. I mean, athleticism. We saw how mobile he was in the in the Rose Bowl. So, really, the tools. It's hard not to be a fan of Herbert just based on the tools. But play on the field hasn't lived up to the potential. Let's just say that. Let's get to the next pick. The Carolina Panthers with the seventh pick select Derek Brown, interior defensive lineman, defensive tackle out of Auburn. Carolina has struggled with pass rush productivity from the interior and, and even stuffing the run a little bit. McCoy is probably on his way out. I doubt they, they re-sign him. Uh, they lost Keekly. There's a new staff. Uh, there's gonna need. There's a big need for a tone setter on the defense and really needs all across the defense. James Bradbury is leaving as well. So they're going to need a tone setter, a captain, someone that can set the example on the field, someone that takes no plays off with an unbelievable motor. That is Derek Brown. He's so explosive off the snap. He wins with violent, accurate hands. They're active. Uh, plethora of moves to penetrate gaps against the pass. I mean, this guy is a disruptor, disruptive, disruptive player. He can stack and shed. He impacts, yeah, both the run and the pass. And rare interior prospects. I have him in the top five. He might grade out top three at the end, but rare prospect. And you, you don't get your chance to, you don't get a chance to get this guy at seven all the time. So I think, I think Matt Rule is going to love, love getting Derek Brown in the building. With the eighth pick, we got Tristan Wirfs, offensive tackle out of Iowa. There's two big needs, I think, for the Cardinals this offseason and in the draft. Um, it's going to be to protect Kyler Murray. Um, he can't run around and protect himself all the time. Eventually, those hits are going to take a toll. Um, he wobbles every time he gets every time he gets hit. I mean, since college, so you can't you can't trust on you can't put all your trust in his legs for forever. You're going to need to protect him. So adding interior help, offensive tackle help would help, and adding interior help to the defensive line as well. Someone that that can anchor while Chandler Jones does his thing on the outside, coming off a, a tremendous All Pro season. So, and, and I think drafting a tackle as well on on offense would really help this uh, help Kingsbury unleash the spread offense he really wants to play. I mean, we've seen plenty of times where he just goes out and and he has to come out in twelve personnel with two tight ends, sometimes three tight ends to run the ball, but just those extra tight ends to help in pass protection just limit what he wants to do on the offense so bringing in a tackle can can sort of unleash the offense he really wants to play with um Werfs is a top athlete super mobile he can get out and make blocks on the perimeter uh, outstanding hands good punch good punch great anchor um well he will not get bull rushed against power He's a former wrestler. He wins with leverage both in the pass and on running downs. He's got a tendency a bit to punch rather than, than looking to anchor and control the point of attack against the run. So, But I think that can be ironed out. 
um, and he can he can be moved at guard or tackle according to what the the Cardinals think they they need most, which I think is both. So that, that versatility is ideal. He can even move to left tackle. He's done it at Iowa. So a good pick here on day one, and then they can look to def- defense for day two and day three. Maybe maybe a couple other alignment, but they can they can maybe fix that through free agency. With the next pick at number nine, we have Isaiah Simmons to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, this is one of my favorite prospects. He's definitely my number two prospect on the big board. Now, I do want to mention that the sleeper pick right here would be Javon Kinlaw. The interior of this D-line isn't as strength anymore. And that, that Just that D-line in general isn't as scary as it used to be. So, I'll probably be exploring that in my future mocks. But for now, Isaiah Simmons, um, it's tough for me to let him slide at nine because I, I like him so much. He's so... He's so versatile, and he can do so many different things for you on the defensive side of the ball. He's just he's just a great football player. And the the motive of having him in Jacksonville is attractive. I mean, they haven't been the same. That defense hasn't been the same since since uh, having Talvin Smith alongside Miles Jack. They can stick Isaiah Simmons in Will, and um, and really try to send them back to those glory days, the days that sent them to the AFC Championship. Um, granted, they do need to bring back it, bring in another corner, and we'll talk about that in a little bit to replace Jalen Ramsey. But yeah, Simmons can step in at will and be a matchup nightmare for offenses. He he can play man against slots. He can uh, match up against tight ends, roam around in the curls. I mean, spy the quarterback, pass rush, you name it. Really, he can do everything. Maybe the one area he does need to work on is just pure inside linebacker play. Um, but I think it'd be wrong to throw him in that role from year one. I mean play him to his strengths right that's the that's the Patriots cool play 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 your players and let them do what they do best moving on 10th pick we got the Cleveland Browns and Andrew Thomas uh, offensive tackle out of Georgia now the biggest mistake the previous front office made was not investing in the offensive line when they lost Joe Thomas so here go and get Andrew Thomas um, a great great pass protector polished pass protector out of out of Georgia they traded Zeitler to, for, for OBJ which I think was not a smart move I mean you created a need along the interior you still have Betonio but I mean your, your O-line is is a shell of what it should be if you if you with all the weapons you have on the outside and and the running backs and Baker Mayfield and sure he's better out of structure I guess than in the pocket but you still got to try and keep him in the pocket so he can make plays and improve um Andrew Thomas got franchise pass protector potential. He's twitchy. I mean, super reactive, reactive mirror ability. Uh, he can recover well against inside counters. He's got good balance in his base. He's strong and powerful. You won't bull rush him. He'll he'll anchor you if you try to win with power. Uh, dude's got massive hands. I mean, he doesn't. Once he's got his grip on your chest plate, he's not gonna let go. Uh, sometimes he oversets a little bit on his pass pro. Um, allows him to get beat inside but he recovers so well that he, he can make up for it i think the, those kinks can be ironed out so yeah big fan of andrew thomas and this would be a great pick for the browns um to protect this offense another tackle off the board and this one's about as straightforward as it gets for the jets i, I wouldn't agree with any other pick here um i mean if you're serious about sam darnold you got to protect him that whole offensive line is leaving to free agency anyways and i don't think they're going to be making any effort to bring any of them back um it was abysmal what they did this year idoga has been all right true my he was a rookie uh really flashed a little bit as a decent tackle on the right side um maybe he has potential to break out next year and really be be a protector for someone they can build around but he's just about the only guy they got right now. So bring in Mikai Becton. Dude's a mountain. He's a wall. I don't know what you want to call him, but he deserves it. He's just huge. He's like 6'7", 369 pounds. Like it, 69. Love it. Funny. Um, nimble feet for his size. Uh, he's going to surprise a lot of people in Indy with how he moves. I mean, for a guy that big, he plays to his strengths against the run. Obviously, you'd expect a guy like that to be a mauler, and that's exactly what he is. He ragdolls defenders. I mean, he's fun to watch. I mean, he's the type of guy you just turn on the tape, grab your pancakes because this guy's going to serve him to you. And Fun prospect to watch. One of my favorite in the draft for sure. So that's – that's is that the fifth tackle off the board? I think it might be the fourth or the fifth. Anyways, big run on tackles in this mock draft, and I think that could realistically be how things shape out in, in April. 
The Oakland Raiders with the 12th pick go Jerry Judy. I mean, he's coming off an outs. The Raiders are coming off an outstanding draft in 2019. They drafted based on physicality and leadership. They got Farrell, Jonathan Abram, Josh Jacobs, Foster Moreau, Max Crosby, Trayvon Mullen, Alec Ingold. Great fullback. I mean, that draft is outstanding. And if they can build on that and get some weapons for this offense, it could be an outstanding team. I think they got the best O line as well in, in the NFL, maybe after the, the Niners. But. Now they need some playmakers on the outside. Tyrell Williams just hasn't been it. Um, someone complimentary to what Renfro and Waller does, a wide receiver one, and I think that's what Jerry Judy is. Um, he's the next best route runner out of Alabama. He manipulates the stem so well, the way he varies speeds and just attacks leverage and changes his trajectories. He's so smooth out of his breaks. He's instinctive. He's going to get in the open zone. He's going to sit there and help out his quarterback. Um, some concentrations here and there sprinkled throughout the tape, but I mean, uh, I'm not too worried. Maybe I should be. I'm kind of closing my eyes on that. I mean, we'll see how we'll see how it shapes out. But I don't think it's a major issue. Um, could be a bit more physical in his routes as well against contact. But again, when you're that agile and that good of a route runner, you're gonna get open. You're gonna look to avoid contact and and get in get in open space. And really, wide receiver one potential. You can align anywhere, slot outside, left, right whatever you want he'll do it and he can make plays from behind the line of scrimmage if you want to get into the ball and jet sweeps as well on screens or he's such a threat after the catch explosive second gear I mean it's tough not to like Judy and he's my undeniable wide receiver one next we got the Colts with pick number 13 going after Javon Kinlaw um, length is the name of the game for Chris Ballard and that applies to linebacker, secondary and even defensive line especially defensive line, that's where it should apply in the interior I believe um, Javon Kinlaw is, is, is the guy they might be going after well first of all they got to re-sign Costanzo on the off uh, offensive tackle otherwise it's going to be a big need right there it'd be a waste to have such a good offensive line and let go of your franchise left tackle you have cap space, pay up, he's worth it um, I was also pretty tired of seeing quarterbacks mocked to to the Colts, so I wanted to explore another another direction right here. Um, they need the pass rush help from the interior, and and Kinlaw is one of the best penetrators in the draft. I think he'd be ideal one if it, it were it not for Derek Brown in in any other draft. Um, dude's a physical freak, lengthy, violent hands, attitude on the field is violent as well. Stack and shed expert. He can really shoot gaps. He's a penetrator. He's, he's I think his impact against the run can improve. Right now, he's 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 a tremendous pass rusher, but if he can fix his pad level and maintaining leverage, his balance and body control issues should iron out. He's a physical freak, man. You you don't let guys like that fall out of the top fifteen. And I think the Colts Colts are gonna bite, and and he's gonna be he's gonna be great at the next level. So with the next pick, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going after Jordan Love quarterback out of Utah State and I'll spare you the Jameis talk I think it's time to move on I think everyone knows it's time to move on hopefully Arians does too although Jameis Winston did play a big role in why Bruce Arians wanted to take this job he perfectly fits the type of quarterbacks that Bruce Arians tends to go after I mean gunslingers with big arms and and the confidence to make every throw and believe that they can make every throw and he really fits that bill when you think of Jameis Winston and well, another quarterback that fits that bill is not Philip Rivers, although I'm an advocate of Philip Rivers to Tampa Bay, is Jordan Love. If Jordan Love in versus 2018 season with 2019, I, I strongly believe he'd be in the discussion for in the discussion for a top 10 pick. But man, he's a tough evaluation, and that senior tape is not always pretty. Um, there's really two sides of the spectrum in terms of people and how they how they evaluate Jordan Love. Some believe he has Pat Mahomes-esque abilities. I'm not saying he is Pat Mahomes. I'm just saying some traits are comparable in terms of the arm strength, uh, getting the ball out from different arm angles and, and all that and playing out a structure. And on the other hand, he could also be the next Deshaun Kaiser, and I tend to tilt for the latter. I'm a bit I'm not finished with his evaluation, but it does require a big leap of faith if you're going to believe in in Jordan Love, but he does do some things really well. I mean, speaking of the arm talent, just multiple release points, quick release under pressure. He's got an amazing arm, man. He can make every throw. He drops some drops some dimes at, at times on the on the outside in the honey hole in between the corner and the safety. I mean, he he really believes he can make every throw, and you like that confidence. He's got an ego to him. He's got a confident confident type of passer, and I like that. 
Um, unlike Herbert, also his tape is is sprinkled with not as much screens and not as much underneath throws. He, they make him go out and really play on that intermediate to deep level, and that that's fun to watch and and fun to evaluate. So he he has some some good tape to interpret. His issues, though, his issues are, are a major concern for me. Decision making, he's gonna miss some linebackers making reads sometimes, and and get picked off just also staring down his targets as well over the middle just just some some major red flags in his tape so i'm not done with his eval not fully sold on him but he fits what arians might be after he might believe he can he can clear up all the all the wrinkles in his game not totally convinced that's going to be simple but if one coach is going to is going to be on him and be able to do that it, that's it's bruce arians so jordan love to the buccaneers Next, we got the Denver Broncos and C.D. Lamb to the Broncos. Now, this one's fun. If you're a Broncos fan, you have to be excited about the future. I mean, when you look at what Drew Locke was able to do over the second half of the year, Sutton's breakout, he's molding into a wide receiver one. That O-line hasn't been terrible. I mean, I know all the hate about on, on Garrett Bowles, and sure, he gets a lot of flags, but when you look at when you look at the entirety of his reps, he, he doesn't lose a lot. Sure, he holds, but... He's not. He's not that bad, and he's got. He's got potential to keep on prog- progressing. I don't think it's time to move on. Throw some weapons in there alongside Cortland Sutton. Deshaun Hamilton hasn't really lived up to the expectations. I was a big fan of him coming out. Uh, I'm not closing the door yet, but CD Lamb is just special, man. Big play threat every time he touches the ball. Such an explosive playmaker after the catch. Um, really sweet feet, quick footwork in his routes and after the catch. And, and at his release point as well, he's tough, tough to play press on. And when he's gone, he's gone. Uh, tremendous separation out of his breaks, ball skills, instincts to find open zones. His route running isn't as refined as as the rest of the top of the class when we think of Judy or Jalen Rager. But, man, can with that footwork and that stop-and-go ability, I mean, you can... I'm I'm sure he's gonna he's gonna be able to beat man coverage at the next level. Body control in the air is amazing. The way he goes up and gets 50-50 balls. I mean, he's been comped to to New Hopkins, and I don't hate the comparison. Think about it. You got Lock, C. D. Lamb, Cortland Sutton, Noah Fant, and Philip Lindsay. This could be this could be a fun, fast offense to play with. Um, the Raiders, the Chiefs, the Broncos. It could be a fun division in general. All right, moving on, we've got the Atlanta Falcons going after Kayla Vaughn Chason, an edge rusher out of LSU, an outside linebacker. Depends how you want to look at him. I tend to think he's more of an, of an edge rusher fit for that 4-3, 3-4, uh, three, sorry. Um, yeah, he is an, out, an outside linebacker fit for that 3-4 defense. Um, a defense that got torn up most of the last season. Um, part of the blame goes on the secondary. Part of it's on the pass rush. I tend to think if you improve pass rush, you're going to get picks rather than trying getting um coverage sacks um the team publicly announced that they were moving on from Vic Beasley I found that very very weird uh why would you announce that in such a public fashion um but they did it now it's clear wasn't any doubt that they would do it he's been disappointing really never lived up to that breakout season that led him to 16 sacks I think in, in a weird way that Chase Sun does a lot of what Beasley did and that might scare away some Falcon fans. But he does that with a plus to it. The way he, he can play the run. Um he crashes gaps really well, sets a hard edge edge. Uh he's a rangy ta- he's a rangy tackler. He's got I mean he's got great length. He can he can he can make he can make tackles on a three yard rate five yard radius around him. Um, they be getting great leader too. War number eighteen at LSU, which we know what that means. That's a, they, that's a, that's a high character number that they award every season. Um, the hand swipes, the ha- inside speed. I mean, as a pass rusher, the the traits are off the chart. The the ankle flexibility and the bend at the top of his rushes is, is very rare. I think he's the most bendy rusher in the class, and it's gonna show at the combine. He's an explosive as well. he's so explosive as well coming off the ball dude's got rocket for shoe rockets for shoes it's it's unbelievable how much ground he covers with his first three steps so a fun player i think i think the falcons shouldn't get scared when they hear the big beasley comps it's just caleb on chase on is what we hoped Vic beasley would be in my opinion so i'm a big fan of that pick 
Uh, the Dallas Cowboys with the 17th pick in the draft. They go after a safety. They've been looking for a safety in a, for a good little while. Um, Jeff Heath, they need his re- replacement as strong safety, and that's why I went with McKinney in this mock. If you read my article, you saw that I went after Grant Delpit for the specific reason that this defense hasn't created many turnovers in the secondary at all last season. And uh, Delpit was a great ball hawk, so I just threw him in there. But they do have Xavier Woods. I don't think free safety is a major, major need. I might be wrong, depending on what they do in the off season. They might be going after Grant Delpit. But I went the other way because they could go both ways. And if we follow history, uh, uh, the Cowboys like safeties that can come down, play in the box, are versatile, can can affect the run a lot, can can click and close and diagnose plays, are quick to quick quick speed to go and make the tackle. So I think it's a good fit. Um, he does a lot of what Delpit struggles with against the run, and he's an all right ball hawk. He's got some instincts to football IQs there. Um, he's not as lengthy to play cover one. He's not going to be a, a free safety and go go and play single high, single high coverage. But he, he he's good to under to stick underneath and play underneath zones and have an impact against the pass as well. So good safety, good safety prospect here for the Cowboys. Moving on, there goes Delpit to the Dolphins. A little a little free safety for uh, to complement Rashad Jones for the. For the Dolphins, he can play single high. As I said, he's instinctive, makes great plays on the ball. So I wanted to play maker for this defense. Uh, I did say they would need an edge rusher or uh, an offensive tackle. I don't have any that I value with this pick. I thought Epinesa, but I think they need more of, a, more of a speed rusher. He's not really fitting the bill that I would be looking for if I was the Dolphins right now. So I went safety. Uh, they traded away Minka, so go and get go and get his replacement. I think this is a good pick. The Raiders at 19 select Kenneth Murray, linebacker out of Oklahoma. This guy is an athlete. Dude is going to tear up the combine in Indy, and it should be fun to watch. He's fast. He's got that sideline to sideline speed and range. He makes so many plays behind the line of scrimmage outside the tackles. Uh, he's so quick to diagnose. He big time hits. He rarely misses. And he's got that Raider mentality that they're looking for. I mean, a leader. He's aggressive. He, he, wants, to, he wants to inflict pain on every snap. He wants to make the tackle. Um, and he's, I thought he would be a great matchup potential when you play the Chiefs twice a year, speed against speed. I mean, uh, I, like, I like the fit there. The Jacksonville Jaguars at 20 select C.J. Henderson, cornerback out of Florida. Now, I did mention earlier that they would get Ramsey's replacement. Well, there it is. Uh, I think C.J. Henderson is the next best, next best corner in the draft, af- uh, man, co- man coverage corner uh, after Okuda. Um, and they wouldn't have to go too far to go and get him. Uh, he's an outstanding athlete, super fluid, um, great leap ability. I mean, he's going to jump out of the gym in Indy as well. Here's another athlete you can look after. Um, he can test every catch. He has speed to stay with top the top deep threats downfield. Um, the recovery speed is unbelievable. Some plays that he makes. Um, the speed turn, one of the best speed turns I've seen right now studying the draft. I'm not done with the corner class, but I think, I think he's going to grade out as one of the top three, maybe top four corners in the class. A really fluid hips on that speed turn and and um he plays with great route anticipation turns his with his eyes on the qb just the way he makes plays on the ball uh, i think he's got a very high upside he's willing against the run but he's not a super super confident tackler i don't know if he's a selective tackler or he just doesn't want to tackle um there's some plays that leave you kind of holding your head like come on man go and make the play uh, so hopefully he fixes that at the next level. But right now it's it's the major major concern is the lack of impact against the run. I think he can fix that once you get to the NFL and you get paid to tackle. Um, that's something that but we'll have to wait and see. Next, here's another team that could have gone after a corner, the Philadelphia Eagles. They go after Henry Ruggs, the third wide receiver out of, out of Alabama. Um, you've probably definitely heard of him. Uh, speed guy, track speed candidate to break the 40-yard dash record at the Indianapolis Combine. Um, I mean, he, he couldn't slide any longer. Uh, I really played around with the corner, thought of a corner with how deep the receiver class is, but this team could turn into a track team when you look at the fact that they've already got Deshaun Jackson that could come back hopefully healthy for them next year. Um, they got Miles Sanders, who's really fast. They got now Henry Ruggs. Um, this speed, this this team could turn into speed killers, and and Wentz has a nice deep ball to get Rugs the field down the ball downfield. He can, 
he's going to be dangerous on jet sweeps. I mean, speed kills in the next level, and they're going to want to invest on that. But once they do that, I think you got to address defense and specifically the secondary and the linebacker positions. Next, with the 22nd pick, we've got the Buffalo Bills, and I went with A.J. Epinesa, who couldn't slide anymore, an edge rusher out of Iowa. Um, Epinesa's game isn't for every team, but I think it's specifically what the Bills might be looking for. They want to get more physical and bigger in the trenches. Uh, Epinesa is listed at 280, and man, he does bring that physicality. Uh, there's a lot of Shaq lost into his game, who they are losing to free agency, so that had a bit to do with my selection. I was like, mm, maybe they could go and get his replacement. Really stout against the run, bull rush expert against the pass. I think he impacts both both sides of the ball, and uh, he, he's gonna he could have a year one impact for the Bills. Could have a pretty dangerous pass rushing unit there without Oliver if he breaks out in the second season. All right, next, here's a pick that's going to get a lot of people talking. 23rd, we got the Patriots going after Jacob Eason, quarterback out of Washington. Um, he was a former top high school QB, uber talented, um, elite arm talent. Really has nothing to envy on the, uh, the, from the top of the class when you think about arm talent and arm strength. He can make every throw. He's a flashy player, streaky. Um We've seen him make plays over the middle and the intermediate level of the field, which you love to see. It's just not consistent enough. A um, lot of accuracy concern. The athleticism is worrying. He doesn't get out of the structure and, and make a ton of plays off balance and, and, and out of the pocket. He really just is a big pocket quarterback. And that can work at the next level. It's not the trend the league is, is turning to, but he can stand in there. He, he checks the physical box, he, the physical build um, box. Uh, it doesn't throw with a ton of anticipation, but I think all those why I threw him in into the Patriots because all those little traits are are I think comparable to what made Brady a a bit of an iffy prospect coming out in terms of athleticism and the way the way he he well mostly the athleticism I'm not gonna lie um, because the rest of the traits are are a bit more worrying for Eason in terms of anticipation throw timing and just getting through his progressions very slowly I think it's the opposite of what Brady actually does but I mean if you're going to move on from Brady go and get the total opposite right so they could work he, he's definitely a project that maybe Belichick could think he could iron out while uh, Brady comes back for a year or two and, and keeps carrying this team forward um, I definitely think his, think his issues could be ironed out he hasn't had a lot of playing time at Washington they haven't really put a lot on his plate a lot of screens um they, they, they really simplified the system for him a little high a bunch of high low reads I mean I think I think with more time more experience reading defenses at the next level he can he can improve and just got to find out why he lost the job to Jake from although I do have a bit of an idea I think Jake from just a better pr processor and decision maker but so they just went with that but he is more talented so it's something the NFL is going to covet Moving on, 24th pick, we got the New Orleans Saints going after Patrick Queen, super rangy linebacker, speedy, quick to diagnose plays, especially for a one-year starter when you think about it. Uh, he can rush, cover, tackle. He's a three-down player. I mean, I love that. Um, sometimes he takes a bit of questionable pursuit angles, but that may be the inexperienced talking. Uh, he's feisty and competitive, but not overly physical taking on blocks. But a lot of that can be ironed out when he builds builds up in size a little bit. I think he's got the potential to to eventually take over as a middle linebacker in the league. Maybe starts off as a will and then works his way over the middle uh, as he builds experience. But a really good player, I think, can be complementary to what Demario Davis does in that defense and 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 help them take the step forward into uh, into winning because the winning window is not going to last forever especially once Brady uh, Brady Breeze retires next we've got the Minnesota Vikings with the 25th pick going after Jeff Gladney a cornerback out of TCU now this is one of my favorite prospects in the draft and well the cornerback need for for Minnesota is obvious they're losing um Trey Waynes uh Alexander McKenzie Sandejo is gone. I mean, Anthony Harris is most likely gone. Really, the only pieces they have hanging around is is Harrison Smith and Xavier Rhodes. I mean, great pieces, but but I mean, you need some some additional depth around there. 
So they bring in Jeff Gladney. He's feisty competitive. That's the top trait I like in the corner. Uh, he's a bit small. He's listed at six foot, 180 pounds. I think he's probably more around 5'11", but he looks long to me. We'll see how he measures out in Indy. Uh, he's physical and press, man. The way he alters his technique is tough for confu for receivers. It's going to confuse them quite a bit. Uh, he won't let the receiver attack his leverage. I mean, he won't let them manipulate their stem as well as they wish they could. Um, he mirrors them really well. At the line of scrimmage, he's really patient. When he's got a jab, he's going to jab and jab well. Um, he's efficient and off man as well. I mean, he's not gonna he's not gonna let them um, eat up that cushion really easily. He's got track speed. He, he can make great reads on the ball. Um, great route combo recognition for a uh, for for uh, for a corner. It's something you it's something you really covet at the next level. Someone that has the experience. I mean, he's a four year starter, so you're not gonna confuse him easily with high low <laughs> high low concepts. You're gonna have to bring some something different to the table to beat him. And he's a willing tackler against the run. He's not the best, but he's willing and he's competitive, as I said. So, I think he's a I think he's a round one prospect. He might not get drafted in the first round because of his size, but man, is he a good football player? So yeah, and he has track speed. I mean, he's going to match up against the best deep threats in the NFL and someone to keep an eye on as well in, at the combine in terms of in terms of the forty. All right, next, so let's go Miami Dolphins with the 26th pick, and I went with Josh Jones, offensive tackle out of Houston. This is a fun pick, especially because this is the pick they got from, from the Houston te Texans when they traded away their tackle, uh, Laramie Tunsil. Uh, so now they go back to the University of Houston to go and get a tackle, uh, Josh Jones. So this is, this is pretty funny. Uh, Josh Jones had a great week at the at the Senior Bowl. He showed great footwork and movement skills. He mirrored really, really well against anyone he matched up across of. Um, he uses hands well and accurately. I th he can get bull rushed, but speed won't beat him, and that's something you really covet for the next level with the amount of speed rushers that are starting to to evolve at the next level. Um, so this this guy is a great he's he's a great fit against that. I think he, he's got some areas to his game he could still work. Uh, he might still be a project for a round one player. That might be a bit of a reach, but this team has a need at tackle. And by missing out on the top five, they have to go after after Josh Jones here. That's to me the, the next best option. I've seen a lot of mocks with DeAndre Swift going to the Dolphins. I'm not against it. I'm a big fan of Swift, and they're gonna need a running back. Um, but I'm not a fan of the round one investment, which means you're gonna be passing on other positions. And for a team with this much needs on on a rebuild i'm not sure this is the right time to invest in the running back i think you should plug i like the mentality of drafting one rather than paying one but plug him in plug him in when you're ready to win um by that time the by the time the w winning window is going to open for the dolphins this guy's going to be looking for his next contract and that's not an optimal situation so that's just my take on it uh, big fan of deandre swift though i got him in my top 15 in the big board he's not in this mock but Definitely a top top running back in the class. The top running back in the class, in my opinion. All right, the Seattle Seahawks with pick 27 moving on. Uh, Lloyd Cushenberry, the interior offensive lineman out of LSU, the center of the anchor of that award-winning offensive line in college. Um, a lot of five-man protection for them at LSU, so which put him a lot on an island, which I think benefits him in terms of experience coming to the next level. He's got great mirror ability. He's really good against the pa against pass for, in pass pro. Um, and considering Wilson's been running for his life all season long, that's going to be a good piece to to throw inside uh, on their offensive line. Uh, you're in the Niners division as well, so you're going to be able you're going to need to be able to match up against that front seven. I think. I think Cushenberry can help do that. He's first to the punch, always the first off the snap, um, gets his hands on your chest plate, a really annoying type of interior interior blocker. Had a good game against Derek Brown against Auburn, so and he wore number eighteen on the offense where he wore it. He can't wear eighteen on the O line, but he did have a patch for it, so that does represent great character and leadership and something that Pete Carroll should love bringing into his organization. So I like that fit right there. Uh, moving on, we've got the Baltimore Ravens um, going after an interior defensive lineman. That entire defensive line is going to need help. I mean, they're losing a ton of players. Matt Judon's gone. Michael Pierce is gone. So I went with an explosive athlete, another athletic freak, really, when you look at this interior defensive line class. Um, Gallimore's another guy with nonstop motor. He's explosive off the ball. 
Uh, I think he's best as a one-gap penetrator in pass rush situations. His play against the run still needs some polishing up. Uh, he plays with his hands, though, which is criteria number one when you look for a pass rusher. They're aggressive. They're accurate. They're, they're non-stop effort, really, with his hands, and you love to see it. Uh, he's got a nice punch and powerful punch to the chest plate of his blockers. Uh, he struggles a bit more in two-gap responsibilities. Um, he wins but doesn't necessarily hold the point of attack and then stack. He's got the issue with the stack, part of the stack and shed, just winning that point and then shedding and getting in um, and, and making the play on the right on whichever gap the the, the, run, the run is coming through. So gets beat at times as well because of his pad level by, by trap and trap blockers. So it's just a couple of things that he's going to need to to iron out. But I think his upside is through the roof. An athlete like that, so explosive, uh, love it in the first round. Moving on, we've got the Tennessee Titans. Now this is a pick I might spend a little bit longer on, uh, and I might get some some repercussions because you think, oh, Derrick Henry, they need to bring it back. Obviously, look at that uh, rushing yards leader in the season. Blah blah blah. Yeah, okay, great. But how much is he going to ask for? Um, I'm a big believer in really there's two mentalities when you look at the running back position you either want don't like drafting them early but don't mind paying them or you rather draft them early really ride ride that running back and then let them walk when they get to year four year five when they're 28 looking for that second deal now more for the latter I think running backs on the second contracts aren't always the best option we're seeing that happen with Todd Gurley before our eyes so I think you can bring in Jonathan Taylor into this offense into this this power offense and he can just step in and, and have even at least 80 percent of, of of Henry's production that can help um, they have comparable comparable um, comparable traits in terms of, of run and pounding and just imposing their will on defenses and, and that paying off in the fourth quarter, which is what Henry does. I think Jonathan Taylor can do the exact same thing. He's got that big playability. Once he gets in open field, he can be gone. Um, he's a physical runner. He's He's got good vision. He's decisive. He's not going to hang around the line too long. Um, he's punishing, and, and I really like his game. I don't have a first-round grade on him. I might still not but I think he's a good fit for the Titans and they might go after him in round two I just wanted to make that fit a point right there moving on pick 30 we're almost at the end of this mock we got the Green Bay Packers with one of my favorite picks here and one of my favorite players Jalen Rager the wide receiver out of TCU um, he he's a tremendous route runner I mean amazing route runner say what you want about his hands concentration drops here and there in non -con non contested situations but the route running is just so refined and, and he's got track speed in, in his legs um, he's very instinctive he manipulates the stem really well short area quickness is a major plus I mean from there's from his releases to his routes he can run double moves he's a his footwork is nice really really beats press with speed and, and you love to see it um, he can run really sharp whip routes underneath. He creates separation out of his breaks, really hard jab steps. Um, so, yeah, as I said, the only knock is really the hand sometimes. Um, I think his impact on this offense could be really interesting, and I compare it a lot to what Rendell Cobbs did earlier on back in his prime. Um, bring bring a guy in like that, I think Aaron Rodgers would love it, and, and it would really bring a boost alongside Devontae Adams and, and help them help them get to that big game. All right, so here we are, the Super Bowl team, starting with the San Francisco 49ers. I went with the way that I think everyone thinks they should go, working on that secondary. They got torn up by the by the receivers in, in, in the Super Bowl by the Chiefs' speed, um, specifically looking at Richard Sherman, which, which kind of got ex who kind of got exposed, which is disappointing because he, he has had a good season, nice little comeback season for Sherman, but closed out a bit, a bit. Abrupting, abrupt, abruptly um, on him. Uh, he's long, instinctive. Trevon Diggs, I mean, is long, in instinctive, uh, athletic, um, really great route combo recognition. He uses his length really well. He's going to contest every catch. I think he plays best with his eyes turned to the quarterback, uh, where he can make plays on the ball. He's a former receiver, so his ball skills are off the charts. Um, I think he's a great fit in the cover three to eventually take over for Sherman, but for now just play opposite of him and, and, and really fit really well in that system. And 
corners with his physical traits and abilities and, and how they project to the next level usually go in the first round, I think we're going to see Dix fall in the first round, and this would be a good fit for him. And finally, the last pick of this mock, we're down to the Kansas City Chiefs, and I went with an interior offensive lineman. Now, I know they have plenty of needs on the defensive side, granted, but I, I got a bit original with this pick. Uh, in the Super Bowl, we saw this was the main weakness in their offense. Um... Uh, Pat Mahomes had to roll out quite a bit um, because of interior pressure that was coming through. So here they get p possibly the best pass protector in, in, on the in inside in the draft. Uh, could grade out as my IOL one in my opinion right now. I love his tape. Um, he's got the prototypical build for an NFL interior offensive lineman. Outstanding base and balance. He's got a great anchor against power. He will not be bull rushed, and that, uh, that's great. I mean, when you look at the power at inside at the next level from from defensive tackles, you want you want that type of guy. He's got a great anchor. Uh, he uncoils his hips really well when he, when he sets that anchor. He's got a strong strong lower half, but somehow still very flexible and bendy. Um, he mirrors very well. He's aggressive run blocking. He's got a nice little pop in his punch. Maybe he could sustain his blocks a bit more, but he's pretty aggressive getting to the second level, and you like to see that. Uh, his biggest knock really is, and if, if you've watched Clemson this season, you're probably going to agree, is all the holding calls against him. Um, he's going to find a way to, to, to work work around that at the next level. And, but I think that's a big credit to his, to his anchor, I guess, and to, to his hand strength and his grip strength. And... That's something something scouts are still gonna value despite the holding calls. They're they're gonna put that as a red flag, but but it does show some good traits. All right, so here we are. That is the mock draft. That is it. Um, love to hear your feedback in the comment section. You can at me at salient underscore fb on Twitter for any feedback, any any picks you disagree with. That's at s e l y a n underscore fb. Um, Yep, would love to hear your takes on what you think. Thank you for listening.